Please be seated. <clears throat> Are we on? Are we on? Is that? Yeah, that's, that sounds a wee bit more, sounds a bit better. Um, just uh, some brief uh, announcements uh, before we, we begin our, our time together. The, uh, first of all, to say, I've been asked to uh, remind people, um, to give a wee nudge, that anything for the church magazine, uh, if you can have it with myself, or, or, or actually be better sending it to Geraldine, um, for the, uh, I'm glancing down here, Geraldine, what was the date? The, the 19th of February? February? Yeah, 19th and 20th. 19th and 20th of February, if you can have it with uh, Geraldine by then. Uh, so we can get it into the magazine. Also to say that um, uh, our Spy is uh, back again this evening it's for our, our teenagers and it would be, uh, if you know of any or if any are watching at home, uh, they'd be more than welcome to join us. That's our, 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 our Sunday night uh, youth group. Um, so please do that. Meets at 7.30 this evening in the hall to nine o'clock. Um, finally, um, I am now required to inform you that the Register of General Vestry Persons is now open and will be reviewed on the 23rd of February in accordance with the Constitution of the Church of Ireland and the Diocesan Regulations of Conher Diocese. The registration of, of General Vestry Persons is, uh, is really us going through our, our voting lists um, uh, for members of our, our church. So those um, who have signed that little form uh, joining our General Vestry. If you're not a member already of the General Vestry, if you haven't signed that little form in the past, um, please do consider doing so. Um, what that entitles you to is a voice and a vote at our church AGM or our, our General Vestry. The review is open to everyone who believes that they are entitled to go. Um, and entitlement means to go to that, to be on that list, you need to be over 18 and to have contributed uh, to church funds in the last year uh, in a traceable manner. Um, so please do, if you aren't a member of the General Vestry, please do sign up. Um, it's so important that you have a say in the running of your church, um, that you have a vote, that you have a voice, um, particularly as we, we move forward into a post-COVID world. So please do consider that. The forms are at the back. Um, I think if you're if you live within the parish of, of, of Scarry, Rathcav and Newton Crumlin, so if you're in the general Brisbane area, um, if you can sign a green form, and, but if you don't, um, if you can sign one of the red forms. But please do sign up to those if you haven't done so already. Um, and that review of the general vestry will be at 7.30 on the 23rd of February. We're going to take a few moments now to, sign, uh, to quietly still our hearts as we prepare to come before God in prayer. Let's pray. So let's take a few moments of silence so that all we hear are the voices of children. We're going to stand to sing our first hymn, hymn 325, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let, let us pray. We sit or kneel. As we pray the collect of purity, let us pray. Almighty God, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly worship and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Almighty God, Almighty God our, our Heavenly Father, Father we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone we are truly sorry and humbly repent for the sake of your son jesus christ have mercy upon us that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name amen almighty god who forgives all who truly repent have mercy on us Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And I invite you to stand as we say together the Gloria in Excelsis. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to all his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King. Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone with the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be seated. Collect for today. O God, who knew us to be set in the midst of so many great dangers, that by reason of our frailty and our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant us such strength and protection as we may support us in all our dangers and carry us through the temptations, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And a collect for Her Majesty the Queen on this, her Platinum Jubilee year. Lord God, the Ancient of Days, you are sovereign over all your people. Give to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth enduring wisdom and faith in the service of all people in this land and of you, her Lord and Master. Grant that her faithful witness may be to others a source of hope, that they may come to know more fully your Son, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we remain seated for our epistle reading from 1 Corinthians. Amen. 
The epistle is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at the first verse. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time. Most of them are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what we believed. This is the word of the Lord. I think it was two weeks ago, I thank you, Sadie, but two weeks ago, I, I put a request out for, for people to put forward some of their favorite hymns. Uh, we opened with one, um, and uh, we're going to, to stand now to sing another, and that's hymn. 57 in the purple thanks and praise books, I stand amazed.
invite you to remain standing uh, for our gospel reading. The gospel is taken from the fifth chapter of the gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the first verse. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats, left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knee and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything, and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> what is Christianity all about? What is the essence of our faith? Often I, I hear the words, a good Christian man or, or a good Christian woman, and to be honest, my heart warms at that. But what does that mean? What is Christianity? What is the essence of our faith? Can you summarize it into one line? Isn't that what they always say? Can you summarize the argument in one line? Well, today's epistle reading sets out to answer that question. It sets out the essence of our faith. It sets before us that which is of first importance. As we come to these um, verses, Paul is writing to a church in turmoil, a confused church filled with division and heresy. And in the light of that, he brings them back, he takes them back to basics. So just listen to some of the language that he uses in verses 1 and 2. I'm using the NIV here. I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received. By this gospel, you were saved. Just look at the credentials for what he's about to say. I received, I passed on as first importance. And this is the message that Paul received from Jesus himself. And that is confirmed by those 
who knew Jesus. And in Galatians, um, Paul talks about how the gospel that he preached is not of human origin, but he received it from Jesus Christ. And then how those who knew Jesus added nothing to it and affirmed it. What Paul is about to present in these verses from, from 1 Corinthians is the heart of the gospel. The gospel according to Jesus Christ. What Paul is about to set before us in these few verses is what Christianity is all about. The essence of our faith. So pick up your ears and listen. For this is of first importance. This is what it's all about. And it's a message. A message about a man called Jesus and what he did. Just listen again to verses 3 and 4. For what I received, I passed on to you as first importance. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried. That he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Christianity is not about you or me. It's not about what we do and what we've done. It's about him. It's about Jesus and what he did. At the heart of, of Christianity, the essence of our faith is that, Je is that Jesus died and was buried and that Jesus rose again. And this is of first importance. Two things. Two things that Jesus did. First of all, he died for our sins uh, according to the scriptures. Throughout Jesus' earthly ministry, he, he constantly pointed people forward to his death. It was the fundamental reason he came. Having discussed his coming death in, in Mark chapter 10, Jesus says he came to give his life as a ransom for many. And throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus' death was front and centre of his preaching. It was his reason for coming. It was the heart of his mission. The essence of, what, uh, the Jesus, the essence of Jesus' coming was to die. The point of Christmas is Good Friday and Easter. It was a, a death that brought people back to God. A, a ransom setting them free. A death that breaks down the barriers of sin. It was a death for sin according to the scriptures. It was foretold in the, the Old Testament. Throughout the Old Testament, time and time again, we're told that a saviour would come. One who would bring people back to God. But it would be a saving work that would cost him. A saving work that would bring him suffering. A saving work that would mean his death. And that's perhaps that it's clearest in Isaiah 53. Allow me to read these verses to you. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Friends, Christianity is not about you, me or what we've done. It's not about church institutions or practices. No, it's about a man. A man called Jesus and what he did. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. At the heart of Christianity, the essence of our faith is a man called Jesus. Who died for our sins, opening up for us the way to God. But he also rose again. 
He was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Again, that is, it was always part of the plan. It was predicted in the Old Testament. Psalm 16, a psalm that, that Peter claims it was about Jesus. In that psalm, we hear that God will not abandon his Holy One to decay. They would not stay in the grave. At the heart of Christianity, of first importance to our faith, is that Jesus rose from the dead according to the scriptures. The essence of Jesus' coming was to die and rise again. The point of Christmas is Good Friday and Easter. It was a, a resurrection promised in the Old Testament, but it was also verified and located in history. Just listen to verses 5 to, to 8. He appeared to Cephas, that's Peter, and then the 12. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also. That's at least, at least 513 witnesses 513 eyewitnesses and at least 12 of whom saw the risen Jesus on more than one occasion what Paul is giving us here is a verification of Jesus's resurrection remember his first readers those to whom he was writing could have gone and checked this up Remember that when this letter was first written, the people named were still alive. And his, he, his intended audience could have sought them out and asked if they had seen the risen Jesus. They could have asked, did they see what Paul says they saw? Paul here is sort of giving us the footnote. He's inviting us, as his re he's inviting his readers to, to check the facts and by doing so he is locating the resurrection of Jesus not only in biblical history but also in living history what Paul is doing is giving the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus giving us witnesses who could be could have been sought out and questioned witnesses who ultimately went to their deaths proclaiming that they saw the risen Jesus. Not only did Jesus die for our sins according to the scriptures, but he rose again according to the scriptures. And that resurrection was verifiable to Paul's first readers. Friends, Christianity is not about you, me, or what we've done. It's not about church practices or institutions. No, it's about a man. A man called Jesus and what he did. For this is a first important. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. At the heart of Christianity. The essence of our faith is a man called Jesus who died for our sins and rose again. A death and resurrection foretold in the Old Testament and located in verifiable history. Christianity is not about you, me, or what we've done. It's not about the church, structures, or practices. No, Christianity is about a man called Jesus who died for our sins, opening up for us the way to heaven, opening us the way to God, and rose again. That's a huge comfort to any of us suffering with self-doubt. One of the great privileges of, 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 of my job is to sit with people at the end to be with them as they, they prepare for death. It's harrowing. But more often than not, the main thing that people 
have in their mind is not the act of dying. It's what happens next. Will God accept me? Will, do I, did I leave it too late? Was I good enough? And the wonderful thing about these verses is that at the heart of Christianity, the essence of our faith is not what we did, but what Jesus did. Later in this same chapter, Paul writes, Christ has indeed been raised from the dead and the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Friends, Christianity is not about you, me, or what we've done. It's about him. It's about Jesus. And that brings hope. That brings assurance. Assurance that we can come to God, that we can share in his resurrection regardless of our past, regardless of what we've done, because he took and destroyed our sin and our death. It's not about what we've done. It's about what he did. So what is Christianity all about? What is the essence of our faith? It's not about church practices or structures. It's not about you, me, or, or what we've done. It's about a man called Jesus, who died for our sin according to the scriptures and was raised from the dead according to the scriptures with verifiable history. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Amen. Now to the King of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour and glory forever and ever. Amen. And we respond to what God has, has done for us through his son, Jesus Christ, by standing to affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. And so I invite you, if you feel you can, to stand and proclaim the faith of the church. We believe. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten, begotten of his Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, he was born to the Virgin Mary, to the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge the we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We're going to remain standing now as we, we sing our, our next hymn, hymn number 12 in the Purple Thanks and Praise books.
Behold the Lamb. We sit or kneel as, as Neil leads us in prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, giver of life and creator of love. We give you thanks and praise for the light of each day and for the light of the gospel as revealed in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We rejoice in the life that you give us and we delight in your presence. Blessed are you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. As we give thanks for the light of Jesus Christ, we ask that this light may shine in our lives and in the whole church. We ask your blessing on all who proclaim the gospel and who teach the word. We pray for all who are seeking to revive and promote faith in you and your love. May the church grow in love, in witness, and in number. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. We ask you to bless our political leaders who have difficult decisions to make, particularly in the time of pandemic and political uncertainty. We remember beyond you, our Queen, on this, her Platinum Jubilee. 
thanking you for her faith and service. We pray for all who work to bring freedom and justice to all people, those who seek to relieve the poor and care for the oppressed. We pray for those who feel that they are working in the dark and unable to find their way. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask that all darkness be dispersed from our hearts and communities. May we help to bring your light and life to our homes and all our relationships. We ask your blessing upon our families and friends and upon all with whom we work or play. Lord, in your mercy. Today we remember all who walk in darkness and in the shadow of fear or death. We ask your blessing upon the fearful, the anxious and the troubled. We pray for all who are in darkness of doubt or despair. We bring before you friends and loved ones who are ill or who are finding it hard to cope with life. We remember those who had requested our prayers. Frida, Desi, Andrew, Thomas, Helen, Desi, Katie, John, Sonia, Roy, Katie, Rebecca, Charlie, and Kate. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we continue in an attitude of prayer, praying together the prayer of humble access. We do not presume. We do not presume. Merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose prophet is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat your flesh and drink your Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. How can I repay the Lord for all the benefits that he has given me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows in the presence of all his people. Would you please stand? Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, welcomed us as your children, and prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He went wide, his arms upon the cross, and with love stronger than death, He made the perfect sacrifice for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. Taking bread, you give thanks, broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, you took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink ye all of, the, for all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true one. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come to glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and wine be to us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
as we eat and drink. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of thanks and praise and lift our voice to join in the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond words. And as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Please be seated. I've said this before, but uh, for any who haven't um, been here for this, um, I'm going to suggest that as I I'm going to distribute the, the little capsules um, and uh, what we're asking is if people could hold off and then as I um, say, say the words, the body, you know, the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, if we can take together, um, we may not be able to share a common cup yet, um, but at least there's that element of coming together and sharing this meal together. So if I could just ask, as you receive the, the, little, the little capsules, if you could hold off opening them until uh, everyone's got one. Thank you.
body of Christ keep you in eternal life. blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Take a few moments of silence so that all we hear are the voices of children. Light eternal, you have nourished us in the majesty of the holy body and blood of your Son. By your grace, keep us ever faithful to your word. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God. have that glory very much in mind as we stand to sing our, our final hymn, um, To God Be the Glory. Would you please stand? <laughs>
and the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. I'm going to ask you, in light of, of uh, Queen Elizabeth's um, service to, uh, today, marking the, her platinum jubilee, I'm going to ask you to remain standing as we sing the National Anthem. bid you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs> 